John Miles here, and I'm going to show how to use the newest model of virus camera, the direct flash lighting DFL1. So it usually comes in a soft carry case, and this is my super economy model, so it doesn't always have all the extra accessories, but it's really quite simple. And in fact, you can just pull it out like this and start using it. But what I want to do is show how it, it fits together. The uh, <coughs> illuminator can come off if you need to store this separately, or you can leave it on. And to put it on, you put this so that the uh, focusing light part is right over at the 3 o'clock position, and then you rotate it 90 degrees till it's at the 6 o'clock position. And as you can see, there's two focusing lights and a cutout to allow for flash illumination of the iris. The next step is you power it on by rotating this rotary switch and then pop up the flash. Then check to make sure it's on A for aperture priority mode. That's the top rotary mode dial. And then you also want to make sure the lens is set to the minimum focus by turning this down. And um, when you're taking photos of other people, you need to have it on the M for manual focus. If you're taking pictures of your own eye or of animals, it's good to use autofocus. And for that, you slide this top switch forward to the M slash A position. The bottom switch, which is VR, that's vibration reduction, you'll always keep that off because it's not relevant or used in flash photography and uh, you'll always want to use the flash for iris photography to get good sharp detail. So this illuminator is designed so you can remove the lens cap after it's mounted, which means you can store it on there. And then there's a switch for each side light and you really only need one of the lights and you don't need it on very bright, but there's low and high. Now with this particular illuminator, the, uh, the right side is going to be a little bit brighter. So usually when I use that, I use the L setting for this right channel. And for the left side, I use the high side. And then they are both at the equal brightness. Now um, before I do that, I'm going to uh, show how you can show the pictures on a monitor. So I have a monitor here. And um, the camera normally comes with a, a mini HDMI plug cord to a regular HDMI, and most monitors can take HDMI. And uh, this one, actually, it doesn't have a HDMI socket, but I, there's, you can get a little adapter for the DVI, which is many different prongs and it will allow me to plug the HDMI cord into that adapter and that adapter screws right into the connectors. So on the side of the camera there is a socket here. The lower one is the mini HDMI. So I just plug that in and now I'm going to turn on the monitor here and turn on the camera and it will uh, let's check, choose a different source. I'm choosing the digital source because I have it on the DVI uh, input. Now the camera will go to sleep if you haven't touched it for a while. And then uh, you just tap, touch this picture taking button lightly, pressing it halfway down and it'll bring up the screen. On the screen you can see that um, the battery is fully charged when there's three segments showing. And the A means you're in the correct aperture priority mode. Um, here it says TTL with a lightning bolt, and that means it's on through the lens flash metering, which is autofocus. Uh, you can still change the aperture. Um, right now the aperture is on F20, and when you have it in the A mode, you just change the aperture by ro rotating the uh, dial, the thumb wheel dial here. So I'll hit that right over here so you can see. So I just change it 25, 22. I usually choose about 22, that's about right. And then for the ISO, I have that set at 200. And there's one other uh, setting, the 
exposure compensation, there's a little button on all the D3000, 3100, 3200, 3300, and this one, which is a D3400. But they're all pretty much the same menu system, so you'll be able to uh, understand from this video for any of that series or the 5000 series. But when I push and hold this plus minus button, I get the uh, display highlighting this plus one, and when I rotate the thumb wheel to the right, it goes up by one third of a stop. But when it says plus one, that means make it one stop brighter than the flash thinks is ideal. And that way you'll bring out extra uh, light in the iris. And now we're going to um, actually show the menu here. So if you have your own camera, and you can use your own camera, uh, any Nikon DSLR will work. Um, it's designed for the 85mm lens, but I can also make it for the 105mm Nikon macro lens, or the 100mm Canon macro lens, or the Sony 90mm. And um, what I'm going to do is show how this menu is set up. So. Uh, you navigate the menu with this disk, so you can go uh, forward, or to the right or, and left, and then up and down. So now I've gone all, all the way over to the left, and it highlights, this is like a little nav bar of icons here. And as I hit the down arrow, it gives me these, there's really just these three menus. And the first one is called Playback Menu, um, and you don't generally need to change anything here. Um, there are mainly command functions like delete, uh, saying which playback folder, display options, image review. That means uh, after, as soon as you take a picture, it'll show it briefly. And um, rotate tall, that means if you have the camera sideways, it'll make it correspond to that orientation. Slideshow, that's just for playing it. And then the last item on the D3400, they add this select to smart device. And I'm not going to cover the Bluetooth, but that's for if you want to use Bluetooth in a smart device such as an iPad or any Android smartphone or any iPhone. So I'm going to go back here, and if I go down one click, it'll put me back at the top, which is the delete command. So now I'm going to go to the right, so I hit this button over there, and I go down into the main menu, which is called the shooting menu. And once I have this little camera icon highlighted, I, I will hit the right arrow to go into the menu. And the top item is reset. I'm not going to reset. But the image quality, I always use normal. <coughs> you can change that if you like. The image size refers to how many pixels, and this is the full 24 megapixel 6000 by 4000 format. The ISO sensitivities. It's better to turn the ISO sensitivity control off, and I recommend ISO sensitivity of 200. So I'm going to go back here. Now for um, iris photography, the white plate balance should always be on flash. Uh, picture control, standard definition, there's other types of settings, but that will change the actual color so it's not suitable for um, clinical iris photography. Color space is always SGB. Active D lighting, it doesn't really make too much difference. Noise reduction, I have it on. Vignette control is just normal, it's not critical. Distortion control is not critical. Now, for focus mode, if you do want to learn autofocus, there's a couple of tips I can give you. And one is there's two, you know, the, the way you focus when you're looking through the viewfinder and the way you're focusing when it's in live view which is like a real-time video display. So now I'm going to go into the viewfinder. And what I found is that uh, the AFC, continuous servo AF, tends to be the best uh, result, gives the best result. Um, additionally, it, you can check the live view movie, and here it's on single servo, um, or you can use manual focus, but I would say AFS for the live view. And now uh, the AF area mode, this, this makes a difference, but it's not that always not that easy to get a good focus, especially on the brown iris, which doesn't have very much contrast. But if you go into the AF area mode and go to viewfinder, 
this battle one called the Auto Area AF, Auto Area Auto Focus with a black box. That's the best setting. It gives you the best results. And going to Live View, you have other choices of subject tracking and normal area. I think I would probably just choose normal area. The built-in autofocus assist illuminator should be off. So I'm going to turn that off. The default is on. And uh, the metering is not critical, but I usually do um, well, center-rated metering. or It's not critical. Flash control for built-in flash. Now here, it, you set it to TTL, that's through the lens metering, for auto exposure. But if you want to do um, manual exposure, you can choose the manual flash mode, and then when you do so, you have a choice of full, one half, one fourth, and so on. But I'm going to go back to through the lens, which is auto exposure. And then the movie settings, we don't need to cover that right now, but there are um, more settings there. And then the last, the third menu here is called uh, the setup menu. And these are also mostly commands. You can format the memory card, which you should do every time you put in a new memory card, but you shouldn't need to uh, format it after that. The date stamp I uh, set off, but if you like to see the date and time on the image, that will print it right on it. Um, time zone and date, you go into the right arrow, and I have this set up for the East Coast time zone. You can just change that by hitting the left and right arrows to choose your time zone. And then, of course, date and time, you just choose that the usual way. And I'll hit OK, because it's already set. And for date format, I'm choosing year, month, day. Daylight saving is off, and that's all there is to date, time zone, and date. On the language, there's quite a few languages you can choose from. The other settings, I generally leave them off. The auto off timer, I like to set custom settings, so I like my playback to be uh, five minutes, image review for one minute, live view on for 15 minutes, and standby timer for one. Uh, self timer is when you're taking a you, uh, picture with a delay. That's easy to change. And these other ones are not generally necessary. For beep, the L actually means a low pitch, or you can have it a high pitch, or off. Uh, flicker reduction I have on auto. The range finder, I like it on, just it, it tells you when it's in focus when you look through the viewfinder. File number sequence, uh, that should definitely be on, and when I put it together, I hit the reset, so it starts counting at one. But you don't really ever want to reset it, because you want every picture you take with this camera to be numbered consecutively in a unique number. So leave file number sequence on and don't reset it. Once you have your, um, even if you change your memory card, you don't reset it. And these other things are optional too. Um, output resolution on HDMI, it's on auto. Now here are two commands on the D3400, which you don't see on the other ones. Connect to smart device and send to smart device automatically. And that's that will be a different video, but those I switch off. And then these other uh, items are not super critical, so that's all there is to, to the setup. Now I've taken a few pictures of my own iris, and just to show you, I can uh, bring one up. You just hit the playback button and the pictures will show and these are all perfectly good, well-focused iris photos. And um, when you're play in playback, there's the third and fourth buttons from the top are a magnifying glass with a plus symbol. That's for magnifying and zooming in. And then the other one is a minus to zoom out. But if you want to inspect the detail, you can do that. And then use this, the arrow keys here surrounding the OK button to navigate. And as you can see, it puts a yellow box right at where the area is. And if I keep zooming in, then you can take a closer look at that uh, color spec there. So I'm going to hit playback again to discontinue playback. But I'll also just browse. Now the picture is a little bit squished because of the aspect ratio. But um, these are all the pictures I just took of my own eye. And it's pretty easy to do. 
And just to show that, I will show you how, how it works. So um, set this to autofocus. And I will, uh, whoops, let's go. Uh, oh, yeah, so if you hit, when you're in playback, if you hit the um, minus um, magnifying glass, you can get more and more pictures, smaller and smaller thumbnails, and until it goes to like 25, I think, or even uh, 100, I think. And then if you keep on going, it'll show a calendar. And again, you use these uh, navigation buttons, and you can find all the pictures taken on a certain day. But uh, today, uh, these were taken on the 30th. Today is the 31st, so I'll take a few more pictures. And now to get back to the full screen per photo, I'm going to hit the plus magnifying. Uh, a sec. There it is. All right, let's just start that over again. There. Now we'll go here. And I need to zoom in. All right, well, that's just an example. Now, what I'm going to do here is just um, set it to autofocus. I'll turn on. Uh, now, I like to have the light coming from the lateral side because it'll be more ending up in the pupil. So I just set it to the L position, the middle position. And then all I have to do is uh, position this here. And there we have a photo. And as you can see, now there's a little bit of lashes there. If you don't like the arrangement, you can just take it over again. I opened a little bit wider there. Well, just a little bit. And now I can actually zoom in and check for detail focus. And it's a perfectly good photo. And so now when I take the other eye, I will um, turn this one off and turn this one on. And then I just hold it in front of my left eye. I'll tug down a little bit here. And then it takes a picture, again, with uh, autofocus and auto exposure. And, um, and there you have it. So that's all there is to it. Now, again, this is the super economy model. Um, the Illuminator by itself is available separately for $300, or you can get the entire kit for about fourteen to $1,500, depending on your options, so like an extra lens or a case. But as you can see, that's very easy to use. So now uh, you just turn it off. Thanks for watching.